Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to the Audio Analyst. Pardon me. Today, I'm going to bring you a review of an amazing and relatively new DAC. Now, <laughs> those of you who know me are probably thinking, what? Someone take his temperature. He's an analog man through and through. And while that is absolutely true, this deck has really won me over, guys. Um, when Mola Mola introduced their Makua line stage at Axpona 2016, with its optional Phono stage and DAC, uh, the retail was $22,490 as configured. Driving a pair of their Kaluga mono amps, I was very taken with the system's engaging attributes. Um, fast, impactful bass, clean transients, um, articulate mids, uh, and really luxuriant body and bloom. So when GTT Audio's Bill Parrish, the North American importer for Mola Mola, asked me if I'd like to take a listen to and report on the Mola Mola flagship DAC, the Tambaki, without hesitation, a resounding yes please flew out of my mouth. Now, if you're curious about the company name, Mola Mola, as I was when I first heard this product lineup, it, it turns out that Mola Mola is the common name for the ocean sunfish, which I found described as one of the largest and heaviest known bony fishes in the world. They, adults typically run anywhere from 515 to 2,000 pounds or more. And as an interesting device, Every product in the Mola Mola lineup bears the name of a unique fish as its moniker. In this case, the Tambaki is a large species of, of uh, freshwater fish native to tropical South America. Other product names include Makua, their preamp, and Kaluga, their monoblock power amps. Now, it's probably no secret that I have long been a fan of the work done by the chief designer for Mola Mola, one Bruno Putzies. A cum laude graduate of Belgium's National uh, Technical School for Radio and Film, which is now known as NARAFI, he studied power stages and switching audio amplifiers. Upon graduation, he spent the next decade as an engineer at the Philips Applied Technologies Lab in Leuven, Belgium, developing innumerable digital and analog controlled Class D amplifiers, noise shapers, and modulation methods, and inventing, among other things, the Universal Class D circuit, or UCD for short, in 2003. Now, he left Philips in 2005 to become chief engineer uh, of research and development at Hypex in the Netherlands, and to pursue work uh, with Grim Audio. By 2014, as an extensively published author on the subject, and holder of several key patents in the fields of digital audio and power conversion, he co-founded Key Audio and does engineering for Mola Mola. Now, with a retail price of $13,400, the Tembaki is housed in what is clearly uh, unorthodox casework uh, and weighs in at about 11 and a half pounds or 5.2 kilos. At four and 11 32nd inches, or 11 centimeters, tall, some 7 and 9 32nd inch, or 20 centimeters wide, and just over 12 and 9 32nd inches, uh, or 32 centimeters deep, uh, while the rear, the sides, and the bottom are flat surfaces. The face is concave, uh, top to bottom. And the top undulates like a sine wave, rising up as it extends toward the rear of the chassis, then down, and then back up, uh, mimicking a full cycle of a single wavelength. Now, this non-parallel wavy top and face, in fact, helps mitigate vibration-induced resonances. Now, the curved faceplate is elegantly spartan. Just four small spherical preset buttons, each with a surrounding white LED to show which is selected, uh, equidistantly spaced horizontally across the vertical center of the face, two on either side of a center uh, of the centered uh, one and five eighths inch or 40 millimeter round display, with a small power LED indicator uh, above it, uh, where the face and the top of the cabinets meet, right at the corner, right in the middle. 
there is virtually no unused space on the rear panel. It's jam-packed, uh, which contains connections essentially in two rows. Starting at the top, from the left to right, there are two headphone jacks, a quarter inch or 6 and 6.3 millimeter, uh, and a balanced XLR 4 pin. Uh, then the left and right balanced outputs, next two 3.5 millimeter trigger outputs, followed by the IEC power socket. Across the lower section, the bottom row, we have uh, an HDMI I2S port, an RJ45 network jack, um, Tim Backey is a certified root endpoint, an RCA SPDIF jack, uh, an XLR AES EBU jack, an optical Toslink port, and uh, a USB Type-B jack for USB audio and for the firmware updates. The Tembaki comes with a small, simple remote, or you can choose to use an optional sculpted remote control, which would make sense if you are using the entire Mola Mola system. For my needs, the Mola Mola uh, remote app, available for Android or iOS, was clearly the way to go. Now, from the Mola Mola website, we are informed that the Tambaki supports PCM up to 384 kilohertz, 32 bit, and up to quad DSD, which is DSD 256. And then they say the converter is a two board stack. On the first board, all incoming digital audio is upsampled to 3.125 megahertz at 32 bits and converted to noise shaped PWM, pulse width modulation. On the other board are two mono DACs in which a discrete 32 stage FIR DAC and a single stage fourth order filtering IV converter convert the pulse wave modulation into analog with a breathtaking 130 dB signal to noise ratio. This is near the theoretical limit for 24 bit files and far beyond that of even quad speed DSD. Uh, uniquely, Distortion remains below the noise floor for even full-scale signals. With its lossless digital volume control and headphone outputs, it is also the ideal con uh, control hub of a minimalist audio system for music lovers who have moved on to a digital source-only system. And that's the end of the quote. i got to tell you guys, I, I was particularly pleased to note that with the pair of mono DACs, the Tembaki eschews PCM, pulse code modulation, altogether, and instead uses pulse, pulse wave modulation. Now, PWM is a special case of pulse density modulation, one bit or bit stream, where the switching frequency is fixed, and all the pulses corresponding to one sample are contiguous in the digital signal. Now, beyond that, there's not a lot of detail uh, in the... Uh, information about how it works, and, and we're kind of left to speculate, but so what. Now, from the user perspective, day-to-day -day use via that Mola Mola remote app for your phone or tablet, uh, and all software and firmware updates, uh, it may well be the most user-friendly and easiest to use DAC I've yet encountered. I mean, seriously, it's just so easy and such a piece of cake to do the updates and to manage it. Um, preset selection and configuration, volume settings, viewing of the DAC status, the, the details of the currently playing file and firmware versions, as well as checking for and downloading firmware updates are all conveniently handled from your smartphone or tablet. And if you are using the Mola Mola Makua preamplifier, you can manage the add-on photo stage with this uh, app as well. Well done, Mola Mola. Really nice uh, app. Really nice. But what about the sound? How does it sound with music? What kind of, of musicality does it express? Guys, I gotta tell you, right from the shipping case, um, this unit was fully run in at GTT before it shipped. It was clear that Tambaki was a cut above. Um, the first attribute that Tambaki showed, um, it nearly shouted out at me, uh, was its overall sense of ease and organicness. It was decidedly less digital sounding, exhibiting none of the more typical leaner body and tonality, um, edgier, flattened dimensionality at all. Um, 
Base was offered up in near flawless extension, weight, and fullness, rendered with an uncharacteristically analog sounding integration. I mean, tones were, were rounded, not flattened. Um, an extension dug down into the subsonic area. Uh, my, my Von Schweikert Audio Ultra 9s can play down to 16 hertz. But yet the finesse and sheer definition it was able to render in this region was utterly exhilarating. Um, the resultant achievement in bass coherence, depth, and impact, overall tonal, tonal balance, and, and in particular, in the degree of spatial recreation it accomplishes, is considerably more refined and accurate than I've been able to realize with virtually any other single DAC bo or single box DAC. I mean, seriously. And guess what, music lovers? Mid-range is every bit as well constructed and exhilarating. I have to be honest. This frequency region is one I most often take issue with and find utterly unfulfilling with most digital rendering systems. The, the crucial mid-range color and dimensionality, so effortlessly and accurately reconstructed, even by the most average of LP playback systems, is usually reduced to a bland, somewhat bare tonality, and diminished to a flattened cardboard cutout representation of the music spatial properties, both in terms of overall soundstage relationships and the presenting of the authentic size and bloom of instrumental images. Not with Tambaki, guys. Timbre is remarkably genuine, recording permitting, and is depicted with a striking resolution, as well as with a genuine sense of body, instrumental bloom, <laughs> and almost reach out and touch texture. Again, the level of Tambaki's accomplishments in this regard are rare, especially for a digital reconstruction engine that does not use external power and reclocking devices. I mean, this is one box, guys. Uh, this is a fabulously seductive characteristic. I mean, it's just, it's overwhelmingly amazing. You, you'll love the mid-range of this thing. For those of you who simply must have that sense of air and extension, who relish hanging on the ever so delicate and elusive trail of a cymbal or triangle strike as it fades into nothingness in a jazz or classical recording, your time with Tambaki will not disappoint. There is an ease, um, a combination of effortlessness and nearly unfettered extension in the way it handles upper mid-range and treble information. Starting in the presence region through the top octave, which is absolutely alluring. Now, while I've heard a number of single box DACs that may offer a hint of the naturalness that the Tambaki so fluidly expresses, those other DACs have all seemed to do so at the expense of resolution. They seem to have chosen to forego the, the musically relevant transparency that Tambaki offers in effortless congruence with its naturalness. Perhaps done in an attempt to avoid that all-too-frequent digital glare, that hard, edgy, fatiguing brightness that is so common among less accomplished DACs. Now, in my system, while authentic timbre, unrestricted extension at both upper and lower frequency extremes, transparency, resolution, instrumental bloom, and a tangible sense of texture and body are crucial. Components, digital or otherwise, that cannot re reconstruct convincingly sized instrumental images woven into a realistically sized and spaced soundstage simply don't make the cut. Guys, here again, the Tambaki brings it. It totally brings it home. It is truly exceptional in this trait, and, and this ability should be in fact seen as one of its strongest capacities. I would venture to say that this exceptional ability is the result of a combination of both its remarkably faithful reconstruction of bass down into the, sub the subsonic regions, and its elevated resolve because of its reliance on bit streaming, perhaps? I don't know. Maybe. Regardless, the Tambiki renders one of the most believable get-up-and-walk-around-in-the-soundstage presentations I've yet heard from a single-box DAC. Another area where the Tambiki compares uh, or competes with the abilities of much costlier DACs 
is with its ability to vividly convey dynamic expression, guys. From the interpretation of subtle shadings and nuance down near its vanishingly low noise floor, to its wide-ranging ability to present remarkably volatile dynamic events. The resultant veracity, explosiveness, and scope of its ability to render dynamic scaling was simply spectacular. I, I must admit to being more than merely a little impressed with the Tamaki. From its utter ease of use and effective upgrading path, uh, given the thoughtful and effective Molomola remote application, through its completeness in connectivity and versatility, to its utterly engaging, organic, remarkably analog-esque presentation, this is one extraordinarily music-making device, one that will not be embarrassed when compared to much more expensive entries. Guys, even some multi-box mega systems here. Okay. In fact, the Tambaki is such an exceptional performer that it just may send many of its more costly competitors slinking off with their tail tucked between their legs. Uh, my hat is off to the entire Mola Mola team for abandoning the age-old PCM standard and having the vision and boldness to render everything using its pulse density model and for setting such astonishing benchmarks in its musical expressiveness and transparency, its ease of presentation, um, its organic and rhythmic flow, and its beguilingly uh, natural overall delivery. It, in its class and price range, it is simply one stunning and remarkably overachieving device. And guys, while, while no piece of gear is perfect and everything has weaknesses, Tambaki still outshines its nearest competitors, many of which cost more than it does and is utterly captivating. Please give this device your attention. It's remarkable. It is most enthusiastically recommended. I'd like to remind everyone that all my videos and links to virtually everything I've had published on the web going back to the mid-1990s, as well as, as much of my printed work, is available at the Audio Analyst website. I've added a, a link to that site, as well as to the written review and enjoy the music for the Tambaki, which uh, enjoy the music is in celebrating its 25th anniversary this month. So you might want to check it out. It's an interesting page. Um, uh, to, the com to the comments section. So I hope you'll check it out. Um, finally, uh, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you're enjoying our conversations. And thank you so much for dropping by today, as always. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers.